There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened, the land, it is green, a new grace has been released, the glory, the glory of Blessing is here. It's all here. Lift up your hands, come on. The glory of the ladder is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another flow. Good evening, everybody. You are welcome to another exciting session of the Winning in Parenting Conference. I'm super excited to be welcoming you to um, this um, session where we're going to be talking about um, how we can help our teenagers thrive. Um, we have somebody very um, seasoned, you know, uh, somebody very vast in these matters who will be coming to speak to us about it in a few minutes. So this conference has been nothing short of amazing. We have had so many um, aha moments, and I know that this session is not going to be different. In fact, I can assure you that you're going to leave this session with lots of takeaways. So I want you to you know, share this video and um, get ready to be empowered with value-rich information tonight. So I have here with me a very special guest joining us from the UK. I'm going to play her profile now and then I'm going to bring her on. So if you know any parent or any stakeholder in a child's life, please get them to join us uh, so that we can learn together. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone that has been coming in from day one. Trust me, this session is going to leave you mind blown. Thank you. Fina Chichi is a passionate parenting, a consultant, parenting consultant, and consultant and coach. She has worked with has parents worked and with teens, teens for, teens over, for 10 over 10 years. Helping parents, helping parents with how to, with understand, how to understand, communicate, communicate connect, connect, and raise and the next responsible leaders of tomorrow. Her organization, Parenting Teen Solutions Limited, is dedicated to empowering, educating, encouraging, and equipping parents with the right tools to help themselves and their teens as they navigate through the changes and challenges of the adolescent journey. It is her mission to help, support, disrupt wrong parenting habits, norms, and transform the lives of families through wholesome, godly, compassion-led thinking. Her parenting experience and work has given her opportunities to speak on global platforms, local UK authorities, schools and churches, both in the UK and around the world. She is the host of the Parenting Teens Solutions podcast, recently listed in the 11th in the top 60 world podcast list for Parenting Teens. She is an Amazon best-selling author, an international speaker, and a mother to two young adults and two teenagers, Fina Chichi. Okay, welcome, um, welcome. <laughs> so good to have you with us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for, I know it took a lot for you to be here tonight and mm -hmm. I do not take it for granted. I <laughs> appreciate your sacrifice. Thank you so much. That's okay. You know, you are 
really passionate about this work you do with children. Thank you so much. We love and appreciate you. So <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to leave you in the studio so that you can okay. get it. Thank you very much, ma'am. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And you can hear me. You can hear me clearly. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes I can. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everyone. I feel like taking off my glasses. I'm not used to my glasses. <laughs> How is everybody doing? And I tell you something, every time I get to um I get to speak um on a on a platform um to parents, I am as excited as I was from the start. I've done this for so many years. Um, but it's still something that um, um, I, I, I really, I'm just so passionate about it. And so for every opportunity that I have um, to speak to parents, it's a great honor for me. So thank you so much um, um, for, for this invite. Today, we're going to be speaking on raising teenagers who can thrive in today's world. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for teenagers. You know, my first my first love is for teenagers. I, I am I'm their voice. I, 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 I speak on their behalf. And so being on this show and, and uh, being in this conference and speaking on how we can raise teenagers who thrive in today's world is, it means a lot to me. I have teenagers myself. And so this is a very, um, very, very relatable um, topic to me. So we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to share my screen. I hope I can share it. Uh, that's it. Yeah. I think it's coming up now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Do you know what? I'm going to put my glasses back on. <laughs> okay. So raising teens who can thrive in today's world. The first thing I just want to talk about is what is thrive? You know, thrive means to grow, to develop, to be successful. That's what thriving means. Winning, growing. But I, I, I want to put it to us that... <clears throat> In thriving, I don't want us to think that we're just looking at just academics. Oh, yes, I want my children to do, I want my teenagers to do perfectly, excellently in school. There's a place for academics and academics is great. And we want our children to thrive in their academics. But when I'm talking today, I'm going to be speaking, when, I, when I'm talking about thriving today, being successful today, I'm looking at the wholesome child. I'm looking at everything not just in their academics, okay? So that's really, really key for us to know. I've said here that, why is this the case? Because life comes with very, with so much inevitable challenges and it's vital that our teens are able to handle them. So if we focus on only education and we raise our children to be the excellent PhD holders without having life skills, without knowing how to interact with people, without having social skills, all those kind of things, then they're not going to be balanced and they will not even, it won't, they won't be able to thrive. Thriving is about thriving in the whole, you know, in every part of their lives. Okay. So that's really key for us to know as parents. I've said it here. Thriving is not only about academics. Okay. All right. So one thing I want to start with first is the teenage years are unique. And it's important that we remember that because I think sometimes as parents, sometimes we do forget what our own teenage years was like. We, we tend to think, we tend to think that our children who were 10 year olds, now that they're teenagers, we should still talk to them how they were when they, when they were 10 year old. We should still, we should still expect them to respond the way they responded when they were eight, nine and 10. And it doesn't work that way. And this is one of the reasons that there's usually a lot of misunderstandings in the teenage years, because we haven't remembered that the teenage years are unique. Teenagers are growing to become their own people, their own individuals. They're not a mini version of us. They are becoming their own individual people. They are learning what do they love? What are they more interested in? What values are they picking up on? These are the things that is happening in the teenage years. And so for parents, if we're going to help raise teenagers who are going to thrive in today's world, we've got to remember the teenage years. We've got to remember who our teens are. And I'm going to share, um, you know, some things that we need to remember, you know, how we're going to help, how we can help our children thrive in today's world. Today's world is a different world from when we grew up. Today's world is digital. Today's world, 
so many voices our teenagers have to contend with. So raising our teenagers in today's world is totally different. And it's important that we are in a position where we are open to learn about this new world. Okay, really important. And before I start with, this, with, with how we can actually raise them, I have a few quotes that I want to share with us. And these are very foundational because I can teach you and tell you, okay, this is how you raise teenagers. But there's some fundamental things that if you're not aware of and if you're not practicing, then those things that I'm going to share a bit later is not going to make sense or you won't be able to apply it. The first thing I want to bring to the attention of all you amazing parents is that positive communication is the gateway to a teenager's heart. I hear a lot of parents, oh, my teenager doesn't listen. Oh, my teenager thinks they're this. They don't do this. They don't do that. And I, by the time I ask parents lots of questions, I find out that there's a gap here. We're not communicating positively to our, our, our teenagers. We're speaking at them rather than speaking to them and with them. The gateway to a teenager's heart, the gateway to their ears is positive communication. I should probably change that quote to heart to their to their ears, actually. <laughs> it's positive communication. And it's, it's very important. And that is why you see a lot of teenagers who will probably communicate better to their friends than to their parents, because it's a positive communication going on. A lot of times when all we're doing is telling them off, telling them what they've done wrong, everything that is wrong is all that we're talking to them about. Their hearts are closed, their ears are closed. And we won't be able to then really help them um, grow and thrive in today's world. So positive communication is the gateway. I have this quote that I share and I say, parenting is more than a role. So as a parent, it's more than just feeding your children. It's more than just, um, uh, you know, putting, you know, putting a roof over their shoulders. It's more than just paying their school fees. It's more than that. It's a behavior. It's an example and it's a template of character. You see, your character plays a part in how you parent and how your children take in your parenting and what they learn. You're an example. So that's very, very fundamental to remember. And then I always love to share Alvin Toffler's quote because it's fundamental for me in this parenting journey. And Alvin Toffler says, the illiterates of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write. No, no, no. It's going to be those who are unwilling to learn, unlearn and relearn. So, you know, back in the days, we called illiterates people that couldn't read, people that didn't go to school. In today's world, that's not the case anymore. Today's world is about, are you willing to learn? Are you willing to unlearn? And are you willing to relearn? That This is the place that parents are, should be continuously in, in that openness to learn, that openness to unlearn some habits that are not going to work in today's world, and openness to relearn. Um, and that is the key. And when you're when you're open to learn, unlearn, and relearn, then you are part of the literates of the 21st century. And guess what, guys? We cannot afford not to be literates in this 21st century. Our children are 21st century children. And if parents are not open to learn, unlearn, and relearn, parents are going to be left behind. Your children are moving forward in the 21st century. And if you're not moving with them, if you're not growing with them, if you're not learning or learning and relearning, that gap is going to get bigger and bigger and you will be left behind. And I know with all the experience I have with parents, no parent wants to be left behind. Okay, so those are the fundamentals. All right, how do we help our teenagers thrive? First of all, we've got to get to know our teenagers. You see, your 10-year-old son, now that he's a teenager, he's not the same, he's not the same person anymore. You've got to observe who your teenager is. You've got to learn who is this teenager. Get to know your teenager. Because if you don't know your teenager, then how can you communicate in a way that they understand? You've got to get to know them. What are their likes? What are their interests? What, what do they, what, where, how do, what are their temperaments? Are they sensitive? Are they talkative? Are they a bit shy? Who are they as a teenager? You've got to get to know them because it's by knowing them that you can then communicate. They tell us that communication is the lifeblood of any relationship, isn't it? Okay. So if you don't get to know someone, how can you communicate with that person? 
And you might think, oh, I gave birth to this child. I've known him all his life. As a teenager, it's different because teenagers are evolving. They're getting to know themselves. They're getting to understand, okay, who am I in this world? Where do I belong in this world? So you've got to get along with them and get to know them. That's the way you can help them thrive. If you don't know your teenager, there's no way you can help them thrive. Number two, be respectful to your teenagers. And I, I, I sometimes smile when I say this because when we were growing up, all we heard was respect your elders, respect your parents, respect your teachers. That's all we heard. And yes, it's very important that we respect our elders, we respect our teachers, we respect um, our, our parents. It's very, 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 very vital. But where is the case of respecting our children? Where is that? And that's fundamental because respect is a two-way street. We can't expect them to respect us and then we not respecting them. Respect is something that is caught more than it's taught. So if we don't respect them, how can they respect us? How do they know what respect is all about? So we've got to learn to respect our teenagers. And I say this and I want to also say, please don't think that when you respect them, they're going to take you for granted because that's the comeback. A lot of parents come back with, oh, they will take me for granted. They won't listen to me. Oh, oh, they will, they will, um, you know, they will, they will not do what I'm saying. No, if you're respectful to them, your teenagers will be respectful to you. It's the disrespect that they get very defiant about. It's the disrespect that they go out there and do things because they feel disrespected. So be respectful and positive communication with your teenagers. Your teenagers are now becoming individuals of their own. You've got to start speaking to them like the adults that you want them to be. And stop speaking to them as the children that they used to be. Because that is, that is what a lot of teenagers are fighting against. She spoke to me as if I was a kid. I'm not a kid. And then sometimes parents will say, well, if you're not a kid, then act like a kid. But they can't act like a kid if you're speaking to them like a kid. So again... It's going to come to you to speak to them like an, uh, the adults they're becoming so that they can then act like the adult they're becoming. OK. All right. The fourth way to help our teenagers thrive is encourage them. Let encouragement be your second language at home. Let encouragement be your second language at home. Be interested in the hobbies that they have. And I know sometimes our teenagers are not going to have the same hobbies that you have. You might have thought, oh, well, you know, when you were growing up, you were so much into football. Now your teenager is not into football. And you're thinking, why is my teenager not into football? And then you even criticize him for not being into football. But that's not wrong. That's not right. Because your teenager is different. As I said at the beginning, your teenager is not a mini version of you. So be interested in their own hobbies because they're becoming to, they're beginning to understand who they are get to understand them, get to get to be interested in their hobbies, even if you don't understand their hobbies. Let that do, let those be opportunities where you guys are talking about it. Let him let, let your teenager teach you about their hobbies. Because in those times, because what these these points that I'm sharing now, what these points help you to do is they help you to connect with your teenagers. So when you're connected with your teenagers, then you can then speak to them about thriving. Then you can then encourage them about thriving. Then they can hear you when you're speaking to them about what they need to do to thrive in today's world. Without the connection, our teenagers' ears are blocked. Without the connections, our teenagers' hearts are actually blocked. Without the connection, our teenagers' mouths are actually shut. They're not coming to you to talk to you about, oh, I was thinking of this idea. What do you think, mom? What do you think, dad? Because the connection is not there. And that's why these things that I'm sharing, they, they, what they do is they build that connection. So that any further communication you have with them is built from the foundation of connection. The fourth point, surround them with positive role models. Our teenagers need other positive adults in their lives. It's, it can't just be only us as parents. And sometimes parents are, um, parents um, 
uh, what's the word I'm trying to use now? Sometimes parents hesitate on this because they think that, well, if they surround them with positive role models or if they surround them with other positive adults, then the teenagers will not really talk to them. And I tell this to parents that sometimes you could be saying the same thing over and over and over again to your teenager. Your teenager may not hear you, but when somebody else says that same thing that you have told your teenager, your teenager will hear them better. And does it mean you don't know what you're saying? No, it's just that sometimes they want to hear the second ear. They want to hear it from somebody else. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we shouldn't feel threatened about that. For myself, I'm a, I'm a positive role model. I, I mentor a lot of young people, but I also get my kids to be mentored by other people. I expose my children to positive role models. It doesn't threaten me. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that if someone tells them something and they go for that advice, that positive role model's advice, it doesn't, it doesn't make me less than who I am. And that's something that parents should embrace. We shouldn't be threatened that somebody else is able to encourage your child or guide your child in the right direction. We all, we all need and have destiny helpers. And so surrounding your children with positive role models is really, really important because our children, we want our children to be internally driven. We want our children not to be dependent on just us telling them, go and succeed, go and read, go and do this, go and... No, we want our children to be motivated, self-driven. And when they read from positive role models, when they watch positive role models, when they talk to positive role models, that helps them develop that internal drive. I tell this to parents, I say, are you not tired of every time shouting about homework, shouting about this, shouting about that? Don't you want your teenagers to just be internally driven and like, you know what, I'm going to get this grade. I need to go do some work. Is that, is that not what you want as a, as a parent? So we, we need to be able to start surrounding them with positive role models. Send them stuff. Sometimes I, I see something on, on Instagram. Someone has said something, role, you know, role model out there who has said something. I share it to my, my teenagers. I share it to my kids so that they read. Sometimes I'm even, when I uh, read some posts on, on, on Instagram, I see that my children have actually liked that post. I'm like, whoa, awesome. So they've read that post because I've gotten something from that post. So if they've read it and they've liked it, that means they've gotten something from that post too. I follow them like, oh, follow this, follow this guy. This guy, you know, is a great resource. And they follow him and they hear what he's saying, especially for the boys, they hear what he's saying. And you see that that feeds into that internal drive for them to go and thrive into today's world. So really important, really important. Okay. All right, listen to them. And, and, and I, I use this word, listen to them, very, very seriously. Because when in my work with teenagers, one of the biggest complaints that teenagers have is that their parents don't listen to them. And if I ask the same question to parents, parents will say, well, what do they mean? I listen to them, of course. They're the ones that don't listen to me. So how can we strike the balance? How can we get them, how can we listen to them more actively? Because our teenagers want to know that we hear them. Our teenagers want to come to us so that we can speak to them and they can speak to us. They want to share their ideas with us. They want to share their thoughts with us. But if they conclude that we don't listen to them, then they're not going to come to us. They're going to go to other people. And those other people may not share our value system. Those other people may not give them the right answer. So it's so vital that we intentionally listen to them. And here's a little clue, and, and is what I've used with my children, um, is that I, I, I ask my children, or I've asked my children in the past, how do you know that I am listening to you? Because I could be in the kitchen cooking, and my daughter could come and talk to me, and I'm still cooking, and I can hear her. I can, for me, I've listened, I've heard her, because I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm, my ears, I'm listening, I can hear her. So I asked my daughter, how do you know I'm listening to you? And she goes, every time I see you nod your head, that means you've taken what I've said on board. So you're nodding your head and he's like, okay. So she understands that I've, I've heard her. My son, on the other hand, when I asked him, how does he know that, I've, uh, that, I've, that I'm listening to him? He says, well, that when I listen to him, I always, I repeat back what he has said 
to make sure that I heard. So he's talking to me and I said, Kenny, are you saying this, this, this? Is that what I'm hearing you? I'm hearing you say this, 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 this. So I'll kind of reiterate what I've heard him say. At that point, he knows that I've listened. So of course, you know me. If I'm now going to speak to my daughter, if anytime my daughter is speaking to me, I am making sure that I'm definitely not in my head, like so that she knows for sure that I've heard her. And when my son is speaking, I'm making sure I'm listening properly so that I can repeat back what he has said to confirm what he has said. Because that is almost like a love language. That's their listening language. If they if they relate, if they relate some, some children, they want you to look at them while they're talking. So they know you're listening to them. Some children, are. it may not be the case. But I would encourage us as, as, as parents, as teenagers, find out from your teenagers, how do they know you're listening to or they're list, you're listening to them? And use that way, cultivate that way, do more often, practice that way that they have shared with them so that they are always, that every time they come to talk to you, they know that you're listening because you're relating, you're listening the way that they understand listening to them. And when you're able to listen to your teenagers more, then guess what happens? You can then be able to talk to them. They can then be able to talk to you. You can then be able to give them skills Talk to them about values. Talk to them about things that they need to do to be able to thrive in today's world. Okay. The next one is speak to them and not at them. I'm a very, very big advocate for no shouting on children. Massive advocate for no shouting on children. When we speak at our children, we don't give them the opportunity to speak their mind. We don't give them the opportunity to hear from them their thoughts. When we speak at them, some sensitive children, it tears down their self-esteem. When we speak at them, it doesn't give them confidence to speak up. When we speak at them, that's what they see communication to be. And they go outside and they speak at people. And the more they speak at people out there, guess what that is? Lack of social skills. They can't, they can't communicate. They can't be friends. They can't have good friends. They can't communicate with, uh, with, with adults as they grow up because they're used to speaking at people because they learn stuff from us. So it's so important that we learn to speak to them, speak with them and not at them. I hear many parents say, you know, this is how I am. This is how it's always been. I was shouted at and I turned out fine. And I say, you know what? Kudos to you that you turned out fine. But please, can we give our children an opportunity to, to turn out better than fine? Okay, let's give our children that opportunity. I know we were shouted at and you, you, you turned out fine. That's fine. But let's give our children a better opportunity to even turn out better than fine. If there's anything, if it's better than fine. Our children live in a different world than we lived. We may think that we turned out fine, but if we're still shouting at other people, if we're still shouting at our children, then that, that does not equate to turning out fine, sorry. So we need it. We, we have a lot of work to do. And no wonder Alvin Toffler's um, quote tells us that this process is about we need to learn, unlearn, and relearn. If you're still shouting at your teenagers today, you need to unlearn that. We need to nip that in the bud. Because the more you shout at your children, I shared that in a post yesterday or today, yesterday. I said, the more we shout at our children, the more we're actually raising them up for the time that is definitely coming where they will shout back at you with, without a doubt. And can you imagine how that's going to feel when it's now your children shouting at you? Many parents will say, well, oh, you're being disrespectful. Oh, you're not grateful. But exactly what we did growing for them growing up is what they're going to bring back to us. And that's why I'm very, very particular about this topic on shouting and speaking at our children. Because today, in today's world, I hear from a lot of parents of young adults. So children 18, 19, 20 have now gone to uni and they're coming back to the parents at home and they're telling the parents off for what they did when they were younger. Many parents are having to go through it. So why don't we use now in making those adjustments? Why don't we use now in learning how to speak to them rather than speak at them? Okay. 
the the the, the um, what's that four five six seven the seventh the seventh point is be a role model to your teenagers as well if we want our teenagers to thrive in today's world we have got to be thriving in today's world we can't sit at home just watch tv all day be on the phone all day and then expect our children to thrive in today's world can't, that's, that's not gonna happen unless your children have been exposed to some role models and the role models would then lead them through that way but to get a whole complete picture of our teenagers thriving, you have got to be a role model as well. They've got to see you going for your dreams. They've got to see you fulfilling your purpose. You see, your example is the quickest example for them. It's the quickest teacher for them. They've got to see you doing what you do. They've got to see you loving what you do. They've got to see you encouraging people, speaking to people, helping people, doing what it is that you do with confidence. They need to see you doing that. When they see you do that, they know that they can do that. It makes it more believable. It makes it more relatable for them. Very important. You've got to be a role model to them. And that's why a role model is not going to be shouting at them. Did you see the connection? A role model is not going to be insulting them and calling them names. No. A role model is going to be respectful. A role model is going to be positive. A role model is going to correct, but you correct very constructively. The eighth point I've got here is communicate true values. You see, your teenager is no more a young eight or seven year old where you say you must do this, you've got to do that, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must. Come kind of speak to your teenagers through values. What are the values you're encouraging at home? Speak to them through values. For example, I'll give you an example. You want your child, you want your teenager to thrive. Part of thriving is hard work. They've got to work hard. Working hard is a value. Let's talk about the value. Let's include the hard work value as part of the values in our homes. Let that the value of hard work be one of the bedrock values in our homes. You know, I've, I've asked parents questions on values before and the answers I get sometimes I, I, I smile, but I then, I then kind of um, teach them in, in, in more ways. Because every time I ask parents about values, they tell me, they tell me, oh yeah, we've got, we've got our spiritual values. And I say, yeah, okay, fantastic. And when I ask them about the spiritual values, it's about reading the Bible, praying, and that's great. Fantastic. What other values that are we talking about? What other values do you share with your children? And they all, it, nine times out of 10, many parents stop at the spiritual values or then they add um, other things like respect. Yes, respect is another big one that comes that comes up. Respect is another big one that comes up. And of course, you and I know that when they're talking about respect, it's about respecting them and the adults <laughs> and not respecting the children. So I always encourage parents is, especially now that your teenagers are teenagers, get your teenagers to go and research on values. Pick at least three values. Let them write about it. What are these values? If they choose hard work, resilience, excellence, then go and read more about these three values. How are you going to apply it in your own life? Because you see, we've got to start making values relatable and that's what we need to start speaking that's how I, that's that's how your teenagers are going to hear you that's how your teenagers are going to build that internal drive for them to then go and thrive oh i love the rhyme in there <laughs> do you know what i mean that internal drive for them to go and thrive so you've got communicate true values let them be, let use them as a resource let them go and research what is it about resilience why do i need to have resilience how is resilience going to help me through my academic year? How is resilience going to help me in my sports? How is resilience going to help me with my exams? How is resilience going to help me in life? Let your teenagers go out there and find out how that's going to help them so that they can then apply it in their own lives. When you give your teenagers that kind of stuff to go and research and do, it, the onus is on them to go and find out. They're not depending on you to tell them what is the definition of resilience. Why should they be resilient? No, leave that to them to go find out. You don't have to do everything for your teenagers. A lot of times, parents are actually stopping their teenagers' growth by going to go find everything for their teenagers. Let your teenagers be, go utilize them as a resource. 
utilize them as a resource. So communicate through values. And why do I, why am I very specific about values? And I tell you why, you know, a lot of times we want our children, or let's say our teenagers, we want our children, our teenagers to be go-getters. We want them to go there, work hard, do the best, succeed. We want all of that. But a lot of times we need to remember that that character that we want from our children or our teenagers is not forced upon them. You can't force them to be hardworking. You can't force them to have that motivation, that internal. You can't. It's not something that is forced on them. It's something that is nurtured. The char character is more nurtured. Character, and that's why we talk about communication in our relationship. And that's why I spoke at the beginning about our connection. A character is cultivated. It's not forced on anybody. You can't force it on them. Even if you shout the whole world down. Yes, they may do what you said. They may be compliant, but that compliance is not sustainable. They will only be compliant for a while, but their main character, the, if it was a lazy character, if it was an I can't be bothered character, they will, go, they will default back to that character because character is cultivated, not forced upon. Okay. And I've said here that character develops from beliefs and conviction. It's our values that actually determines the character. So if you want your child to be hardworking, if you want your child to be excellent, then you it's going to be through values that your child is going to be that. And that's why I encourage us to get our teenagers to choose values. Talk about those values. How are they going to apply those values in this school term, in the next school term? Let them speak about it. These are the conversations that we need to be having with our teenagers. Let them come back to us and then talk to us about the values, okay? You know what, mom? You know what, dad? Hard work value, that's something I'm embracing this term. Why am I embracing it? Because this, 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 this. How am I going to embrace it? That, 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 that. What are obstacles that are going to come my way? And how can I use this hard work value to then overcome those obstacles? So it's things like this that we need to be having. These are the kind of conversations to have with teenagers. Not, oh, you're always on your phone. Oh, go and tidy your room. Oh, go and do those. Those are very stale and stagnant conversations with teenagers. And let's speak to them in a way that activates their brains. Let's speak to them in a way that motivates them to go and search for more. Let's speak to them in a way that they know that, wow, I am very valuable. I'm very necessary in this world. That's what our communication with teenagers should be all about. And when you develop that skill, and habit in speaking to our teenagers through their values, speaking positively, being respectful. When you speak on that kind of level, guess what happens? They respond. They respond very positively. You actually, by, by, by these connections and this positive communication, you help them build their confidence. You help them build resilience. You help them build that their self-esteem. That when they then go outside amongst their peers and their peers want them to do something that is wrong, they have a strong conviction in their hearts not to do it. They don't need you to be there 24-7 for them to say no to a wrong thing. Because it's been built in them already. It's been built in the, on, their, on their inside. So it's very, very important. Values is what determines their character. So speak more on values. Yeah, speak more on values. Speak from a value point of view. If they do something wrong, think about the value that they've not used. Think about the value they should have used instead and speak on those. That's how they're going to hear us. That is how they're going to hear us. Value speaking is the way that we can motivate, we can motivate our teenagers to go out there and thrive. Also, I'll encourage you, who are the people that they love? Who are the stars and the celebrities that they love? What do they love about those celebrities? Because a lot of times values come through the people that we love. There's something about the people that we love. There's a value that they have that we love. And that's why we love those, those people. Me, I love Oprah. And I know that one of Oprah's, one of Oprah's um, values are excellence. I just love her excellence. So I'm working more and more on my value of excellence. 
So when my children tell me about someone that they're following or someone that they love, I'm like, okay, what's, what value does that person have that you love? You know, what's, what is it about that person that you love? These are, again, conversations to have with teenagers. They can then pick that value and run with it and then embrace that value as a value for them. Of course, we're talking about positive values now, of course, you know. So talk about values. Go on Google. There's, you know, if you just Google value lists, loads of pages have lots of things with values from A to Z of values. Get your teenagers to choose some values. Let's talk about them. And let's keep ourselves accountable. You know, have review sessions sometimes. Just, you know, how have we been doing with our values? How have, how have you been going with your values? What obstacles have you come across regarding putting out your values every day? So these are the kind of conversations to have with teenagers that would help teenagers thrive. Because for them to be able to thrive, they need to be able to face new, new challenges. They need to be able to adapt in new environments. That's what thriving is all about. And it's those values that they have that is actually going to help them in thriving. So very, very vital for us to know that and speak on that. And also for you, parents, what are your values? Are you choosing values? What are you doing? Because values are caught more than their thoughts. Values are caught more than their thoughts. If you're a hardworking person, your teenagers are going to see you that you're hardworking. So that when you're even talking to them about hard work, they can relate because they know that you are hardworking. Cleanliness, excellence. You want to do things excellently. You want to be, you're, you're, you're very time conscious. You want to be at places on time. Exemplify those. Let's not get carried away with this African time thing that we do. Because our children pick up from that as well. And then it, it disrupts them in lots of things that they need to do. So it's so important that we as well are embracing values. What values are you working on now as a parent? What values are you going to work on next year as a parent? As our teenagers are growing, we need to be growing as well. That is how we then stay in connection with them. If they're growing and we're not growing, we are staying stagnant, doing the things that we've always done over and over again, we're separating from our teenagers. And the teenage years is the foundational years for the kind of relationship we're going to have with them in the future. So you want your teenager to thrive in today's world. Today's world is a digital world. Today's world is a world where people, communication is very vital. And so you want your teenagers to be able to know how to communicate, how to speak to people, how to interact with people from diverse parts of the world. Because our teenagers are, this is a global village now. We can't say, oh, it, the teenagers are only going to communicate to people in Africa. No way. It's a world, it's a world platform. It's a global platform now. Our teenagers are going to be interacting with different kinds of people, with different values from different religious backgrounds. How can they communicate? That's how they're going to thrive. So we need to learn how to be open and not critical about people not critical about other people's choices because our children are going to communicate with these guys. Our children are going to communicate with lots of people. So it's important that we as well learn how to do that as well because they're learning from us. Values are caught more than they are taught. So I will, this is, I think that coming to the end of my slide, I will um, stop sharing and just kind of in conclusion, we have a job to do as parents. We have a role to play as parents. We have a template of character to show to our teenagers. Our teenagers are growing fast. Before you know it, that 13 to 18 years old goes very, very quickly. And so it's important that as parents, we are open to this learning journey. We are open to unlearning. There are many things that we need to unlearn. Don't be embarrassed about unlearning stuff. We've got to unlearn stuff for our children to pick up what it is that we need to pick up. This generation, Generation Z and, and Generation Alpha, they're here to stay. Dig the digital world is their world. There's nothing, we're not, there's nothing we can do about that. What we can then do is learn how to communicate to them in ways that they get us, in ways that they understand. Learn, unlearn those ways that are disconnecting us from our teenagers. We come with a lot of experience, parents. 
We come with a lot of experience. We come with a lot of years of experience. And it would be such a waste not to impact the experience we have on our children. So our communication to them is key for them to be able to listen to us, for them to be able to embrace what it is that we have to say, for them to even be able to embrace the values um, that we're sharing with them. And remember that even if you guys have home values that you shared and you communicate, as they get older, teenagers, they're going to also pick up their own individual values. And it's important to speak about those values. What, do, what are they gaining from those values? How are those values helping them to thrive in today's world? Today's world is out there. The opportunities are out there for all of our teenagers. And it's the teenagers who believe in themselves. And believing in themselves starts with the people around them believing in them. The teenagers who believe in themselves, the teenagers who are confident, the teenagers who are resilient, the teenagers who are not um, so, um, you know, with low self-esteem. Those are the teenagers who are going to thrive in today's world. And it all starts with the, from the safety of our homes. Let our teenagers be able to speak up. Sometimes your teenagers may not want to do what you told them to do. Ask them why. Don't just shout and then say they've, they, they're so disrespectful and start insulting them. Let's start to talk. Why don't you want to do it now? When are you going to do it? Let your teenagers be able to negotiate with you. Because the more they can negotiate with you, guess what? They will have time to negotiate with other people outside. They won't just be a yes, sir, yes, ma. Um, kind of person or when their friends tell them to do something wrong they just rush and do it without thinking they, because they've learned negotiations at home because they've learned to say no at home they can then say no outside our children are here um, and they will thrive in today's world but a lot of that onus is on us as parents how are we raising our children do we see our children as thrivers do we see our children as people that are going to thrive in this world if we see them as people that are going to thrive in this world then the words of our mouths has to matter a lot build them up don't tear them down children that are torn down cannot find it very difficult to thrive but children who are built up teenagers who are built up will thrive in today's world and that is all i have in today's session. I think there are going to be some questions, um, but that's what I want to share with us today. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful word of, you know, um, um, what's the word now? Thank you for that expository um, session. Thank you Thank for you. everything that you shared. I had lots of um, notes that I took down and um, I'm very sure our parents that are online, you know, did the same. I mean, with parenting, you can never be an island. You can yes, never say you know all because no. you're surprised that your children who you think you know so well, mm -hmm. you know, two years down the line, five years down the line, they are in another phase and yes. you're encountering something totally different. Exactly. And so um, uh, platforms like this where we can come together to glean knowledge hmm. is something that um, really should be encouraged. And I want yes. to appreciate, before I come to appreciate you, yes. let me say a big thank you to every parent who's online. Hmm. Um, so thank many you. things that I would even love to point out but I see we have a question here. So let me just get to that first. So okay. if you get a timid teenager, uh -huh. how do you coax her out and bring her to speak freely with you? Yeah. I yeah. 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 Very good. Danger Very good challenge question. for lots of parents. Yes. Yes. Well, do you know what happens with a lot of timid teenagers? They have been really shouted at. Um, a lot of timid mm. teenagers have been. Yeah. You see, some teenagers can take shouts, like it's no big deal. It would just go in one ear, come out the other ear. Some teenagers are more sensitive. And that's what I tell us to know, get to know our teenagers. Yeah. Your timid teenager, what you now need to do is you can't coerce her out, as the person says. How do you coerce her? You, can't, you have to encourage, is the word. You have to encourage yeah. her to, be, to, be, to now speak freely. And when I say encourage her, your, the act of you listening to her is very key. Because the more she can relate to you listening to her, the more she will voice, she will speak up. So I would encourage the, the person who asked this question, ask your daughter, how does she know that you are listening to her? 
because you want her to mm. know that you're listening to her. She's going to start to talk to you more and more. That's how she's going to listen. That's how she's going to speak freely with you. If she can't, if she doesn't see that you're listening, she's not going to speak freely with you. So start with that question with her and then start to use that. Whatever she tells you is the way she knows you're listening to her. Start to use that more with her. And the more she can see that you're listening to her, the more she will start speaking up to you. Also, use words of aff affirmations with your daughter. Even if she's timid, please don't tell her she's timid. Please don't tell her she's shy. Tell her, you, you, my bold daughter, my bold and beautiful daughter, speak life into her. And she will start to embrace the words that she's hearing. Okay? So um, I, I know that is we are the ones you're saying that she's, you're telling us she's timid, but I'm sure you're not telling her that she's timid. Speak boldness to her. How are you, my bold and beautiful daughter? How are you, my bold and beautiful princess? So continue to say that. And as you say that, that boldness will start to manifest more and more. Mm, wow, so true. Thank you so much for that um, answer. Wow. So you said so many things. Um, okay, let's see. I think there's another one. Okay, she okay. says thank you. Okay, You're so welcome. you said, um, you talked about the fact that... Um, we need to really understand how our children, you know, will really feel that we are, we are listening to them. You just yes. mentioned that as well. Yes, yes. So um, I can really relate to that because mm -hmm. when, for me, when we're having family time, you know, yes. and uh, we're all watching TV, for example. So my son knows we're all watching TV, but when mm -hmm. he wants to speak to me, oh my God. Mm -hmm. He just yes. comes and turns my face. He's like, uh -huh. Mommy, I'm talking to you. Yes. Like, yes. But we are all seated. We are all seated. Yes. And you know I'm here. Everybody's listening to yes. me. But he wants you to focus on him. You yes. know, so yes. it's really important, like you said, that we understand the kind of children we have. There are yes. children that are very sensitive. Once they yes. read your body language, all right, yes, they can tune up or they can, yes. you know, um, they can mm -hmm. still remain sane. Yes. But we have yes. other children who have developed a tough skin. No matter what you say yes. to them, like you said, you shout at them. Yes. They don't even care. They still come running to you. Exactly. But when you survive to the other, yeah. you know, the child yes. tunes up already. So Yes. One thing that has been recurring in this conference is the fact that connection and effective communication are, you know, pillars of a rewarding parent-child relationship. We really cannot overemphasize the importance of these pillars. And mm. so we are encouraging every parent, you know, to just nurture that connection, just nurture that bond. Because really and tr truly, mm. child that one has not bonded with, you know, as a toddler, as a um, school age child, or as a preteen, you know, yeah. where is that relationship going to come from when the child is now yeah. a teenager? So it's yeah. like we are asking for what we did not even work on, you know, yeah. what you That's sow, it. you reap, garbage right. in, garbage out. You nurture yeah. a relationship with your child, you get a rewarding one. All right, but yes. when there's nothing totally. you know that has been put into the ground, I mean, there's nothing yeah. you can actually harvest from that relationship. You harvest from about it. A yeah. Lot of things. yeah, you talked about um, positive communication. Most times we are speaking at our teenagers. That is so true. There's this yeah. scenario I love yeah. to give, you know, especially yeah. for the younger children. Now you are mm. speaking to a young children as a parent. This child mm. is not even half your height. Mm -hmm. That's for the young. And then yes, you are standing yes. over the child. Yes. The child is not yes. seeing mommy. The child is not seeing that. The child is seeing a giant. A giant, yeah. Like they cannot her. relate. Yeah. And not you are not just standing over her. You are now shouting. Shouting. Oh my god. Hmm. Hmm. You know, so hmm. it um it's 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 a whole lot. And you know, parents begin to wonder where that disconnect is coming from. Yes. It's, it's a whole lot put together. So we really yeah. need to approach our relationship with them, you know, with caution yes. and with deep consciousness, with mindfulness. Okay, we yes. have another question. How do you mm -hmm. teach teenagers who come from homes with terrible values? They tell you it's normal since everyone around them are doing it. Very, very important question. 
Yes, and and that's and, and I, I think in one of my, my quotes I said positive communication is the gateway to a teenager's heart. No matter the terrible values that they've had, if you connect with those teenagers, they will hear you. I, I work mm. I work as well in church. I'm I'm a youth leader in church, and no matter what background the teenagers come from, they they hear me. They hear because I connect mm. with them. I'm not. I'm not connecting with them based on their terrible values. Yes, they can be mouthy, they can be, they can be whatever. But because I listen to them, because mm -hmm. I talk to them, because I, I hear them, they connect with me and then they will come and ask me for advice. So if you're teaching teenagers who mm -hmm. are not your teenagers, the, the main key is connection, not correction. Because a lot of times we're quick to mm -hmm. correct them, but we've got to connect before we can correct. Mm -hmm. Mm, thank you so much for that answer. Thank you, ma'am. And um, there's something else I would like to um, point out. You said we need to start making values relatable. Yes. And back home, mm. we find that there's a quote, I can't remember who said it, that you shouldn't be bothered that children are not listening to you, but you should be more bothered that they're actually watching you. Watching you, that's right. About making values relatable, Mm. It's really about us practicalizing what we are saying. Because yeah, most times right. we are saying, we are yep. saying, do this, do that. You know, our expectations yes. are so high. So, yes. Clean, clean the kitchen. I wanted to yeah. tidy the room and all of that. But yeah. have we really taught mm. them how to do these things? So, exactly. you, in a particular way, you want your kitchen to look and you have a teenager, you know, in your yes. home. So yes. you just expect that she produces your that kind of result. But and I when you and when you and when you were a teenager, her. yeah, sorry, and when you were a teenager, you were not cleaning it as that in that method because it's as we sorry that I interrupted you, but that's exactly. a very good point you're sharing. It's, you, it's as you grew older that you started doing it more. So now that you're an adult, you're expecting the teenager to tidy it exactly the way, yeah. So that's a good point. Yeah, very good point. Sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't work. You know, so it the, the, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. So the, sometimes the expectations that we have for our children yeah. are not yeah. realistic. You know, no, at, all. Some, at all. We still struggle with honesty issues. Yeah. Sometimes yes. we struggle with discipline. We still struggle yeah. with consistency. But you want your yeah. child to follow your yes. routine yes. when the child yes. can see that. Hey, you can do one thing and do the other thing. So talking exactly. about making values relatable, you said something very yeah. profound. You said, you know, um, we need to values are caught more than they are caught. Yes. So yes. they yes. need to They're see caught. us do the thing. Yes. They need to yes. it will be easier, you know, to pass these values to them because parenting yeah. is more like transfer. That's right. So who you That's are right. is yes. who you are going to transfer to your child. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's exactly. it what better that way. You are an yes. upright person. Your child yes. knows that no matter what happens, you're going to stay on the path of honesty. Yes, I mean, consistently. Yes. all things mm -hmm. being equal, that is how they're going to turn out as well. So, so many totally. light bulb moments because of mm. that, I won't be able to go over all of them. Character develops mm. from beliefs and convictions. Our values determine yes. our character. And character. that's the truth. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we find that parents do not invest enough time sometimes yeah. we just assume that oh they should yeah. know that this is a christian home they exactly when you are when you are challenged the first exactly you, hey, mope, mope, hey, mope. I know, I know. <laughs> you want them you want them to, to go to the holy spirit holy spirit oh, help me spirit, exactly. don't do those, don't do those so things it's so true, values so true. are caught more than they, they are caught, taught, they and caught. I believe that exactly. these things are going to stay with us for a really, really long time. And I believe that exactly. somebody here has caught a word that they are going to yes. take back home and Amen. begin that transformation in yes. Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Amen. man. <laughs> you are welcome. Lovely. You are welcome. Thank you. So much. I don't want thank to go you. into details, but trust me, it took so much. We are yeah, yeah, thank you. you. Love you. Bless thank you, you so much. Love you and too. Thank, thank you. you. For staying here to our invitation. Thank you so oh, much. Man, you're welcome. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for every every parent that has watched this now and every parent that will watch it as well. 
on on online um let's keep going let's keep doing this we can do this let's keep doing this yeah thank you yeah yeah thank you so much ma'am thank you <laughs> thank all you. right ma'am bye bye for bye. now thank all right, you bye thank you so much everyone for staying i mean that was really good that was so good um you know so really and truly it all boils parents so parenting is about you it's about me it's not even about the children once we are able to deal with ourselves once we are able to deal with our issues once we are able to unpack any kind of trauma that we have come into parenthood with i mean the journey gets easier because you know children really and truly they come into this world all right they don't even know they don't even know what to make of this world that they find themselves in. All right. It is what we do here that begins to shake them. What we do, the people in their um, close environment, their, whether it's a closely knit family or their school, whichever environment they are exposed to, the things that they are exposed to begin to shake them. Those things begin to define who they are based on the values that are prevalent in those environments. And so really, it's us going back to work on ourselves, all right, you know, looking at this area or that area where we need to improve on. She said so many beautiful things, you know, how you speak to your children. Most times we speak at them. We don't speak to them. And so they are not connecting with us. I, I, I said this um, in the first session today, you are in... Let's say you are in mile 12 and your child is in Victoria Island or your child is in Maryland. There's no connection. So how does the child want to understand what you are saying? How does the child want to you know, carry out that instruction exactly how you want it? So we need to learn to begin to connect if we want to get our children's attention, if we want to get them to really listen to us. We need to begin to connect. And to connect, we need to get down to their level. We need to leave our own world. A lot of parents, we sit in our own world with our shoulders high. I'm the boss. I'm the dad. I'm the mom. And you expect the children to come into your world. How? They can't. You have to come down from your high pedestal and enter their world. That connection has to be there so that we are both on the same page. And trust me, once children know that they are seen and heard, they will give you their best version. Every child that you think is bad today can be excellently good, if I can use that expression. So we don't have to wait to always see the bad side of our children. We can set the pace. We can set the atmosphere. We can, we can reorganize things such that our children can begin to show us and even become the best versions of themselves. I said something that Lagos housewife mentioned in her session. She said, if God gave you a healthy child, why do you want to give him an unhealthy child? So if God gave you a good child on a clean slate, counting on you to shape the destiny of that child, counting on me to groom and nurture that child to fulfill destiny, why do we now get to the point of allowing these children go south as a result of the fact that we are not patient enough to do things as they ought to be done as a result of what we have gone through in the past or whatever it is. So this is a wake up call for every one of us, myself inclusive, that we need to go back to the drawing board and look at those areas where we need to you know, improve and begin to foster the connection that we have with our children. It's been such an amazing time. Um, Fina, Chichi, uh, thank you so much once again, dear parents, for taking time out to be with us in this session. Please, I want you to share this video with other parents. You are empowering them when you do that. I mean, there's so much going on out there today. Confusion, identity crisis, vices, so many things vying for the attention of our children. So please, I want you to do a parent a favor by sharing this video. You can share on your WhatsApp status, on your other social media platforms and you know, get other parents to listen to this value-rich information. Thank you so much. 
we are back at um, 7 45 p.m that's a few minutes from now we are talking about how to parent in a blended family so uh, if you know anyone who is divorced someone who remarried someone who had children before she got married or he got married please get them to join us in the next section trust me dr chingwe is really fast in this matter and she'll be with us very soon i'll see you at 7 45 p.m thank you so much and god bless you There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened. It is green, a new grace has been released. The glory, the glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here, it's all here. Lift up your hands, come on. The glory of the latter. Is greater than the former, the blessing to see is all here. All here. There's another flow.